Good morning. Uh, looks like we have a packed house for one of the signature events of Aguam High School. Uh, welcome to Poetry Out Loud 2023. As Mr. Blaine mentioned, this is our ninth annual Poetry Out Loud competition. For those of you who don't know, this is a national contest started by the Poetry Foundation to increase knowledge of poetry and communication skills. Started in 2005, millions of students now participate across the nation. The 21 students you'll see today participate in their classrooms. They are the classroom winners. The winner today will head to the district finals in Springfield in March, and a certain selection of students will go to the state competition in April in Boston. The final competition is in May. It's a national finals with a grand prize of $20,000. Here are the Thanks. rules for the contestants. There will be two rounds of recitation. In the first round, all contestants will compete. The second round will include only the top 10. Then one winner and one runner-up will be selected. The poems have been selected from the Poetry Out Loud anthology. They will be evaluated on accuracy, physical presence, voice and articulation, dramatic appropriateness, evidence of understanding and overall performance. We may have a four minute inter intermission to do the tabulate the scores between round one and two. We will try to get our winner announced before lunch. We are begin ready to begin. So I'd like to give a cordial welcome to our 21 contestants. Come on out, Aiden. Thank you. In a moment, I'll be turning the mic over to our MCs. I'd like you to give a warm welcome to our MC seniors. They are Kristen Vinciguerra, Melina Ickton, Spencer Page, and Maddie Pajak. Come on out. Without further ado, Aiden Weichs. Money Tree by Chanda Feldman. A shine to the bark, silver leaves a flicker in the wound that made the basketball hoop. A bicycle's metal wheel gouged in the tree, the trunk's bird lip that clamps it. Whose childhood monument is this? In the foreground of whose childhood home? It's blind drawn windows. Where is the adolescent of the grass and weeds after school? The adolescent of the fluid leap and jump shot, of the glissando stride and layup. The plus of whoop whoop cry sent up when the body satisfies the calculating eye. Oh, the trees a shimmer and hypotheticals blooms. Where's the undissuaded youth who sought scarce grace here, who sought to make bank? The shoulder and arm and wrist on repeat even as day went thoroughly dark, who refused to come inside until they exhausted the audience of their mind. Oh, extraordinary dunk, oh, hard slam, shudder the immovable tree. Where is the glimmer of a sign one might one day rise among the ordinals to be ranked first, first, first? Wouldn't it be possible? Because if not, if not, if not. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Poetry Out Loud. My name is Spencer Page, and this is my co MC, Kristen. Vince Aguera. It is so nice to be here, and I'm so excited to hear some fantastic poems today. The last poem was by Chanda Feldman. She is the assistant professor of creative writing at Auburn College. Is she the one that graduated from the University of Chicago and received a master's in fine arts from Cornell? Yes, she is. <laughs> Let's see what other amazing poets our contestants choose. Uh, introducing Jeffrey Schultz.
In the Desert by Stephen Crane. In the desert, I saw a creature, naked, bestial, who, squatting upon the ground, held his heart in his hands and ate of it. I said, is it good, friend? It is bitter, bitter, he answered. But I like it because it is bitter and because it is my heart. Stephen Crane is best known for his Civil War novel, The Red Badge of Courage. Although he was never in the military, people thought he was a veteran because of how good he wrote about war. Wow. What a good writer. Now introducing Alexis Wozniak. Common Dust by Georgia Douglas Johnson. And who shall separate the dust? What later we shall be? Whose keen discerning eye will scan and solve the mystery? The high, the low, the rich, the poor, the black, the white, the red, and all the critique between, of whom shall it be said? Here lies the dust of Africa. Here are the sons of Rome. Here lies the one unlabeled, the world at large, his home. Can one then separate the dust? Will mankind lie apart? When life has settled back again, the same as from the start? Wow, Spencer, that was a pretty dusty poem. You know what? I finally threw away my vacuum. It was just collecting dust. Thank you, thank you. Now introducing Zahida Kier. I felt a funeral in my brain by Emily Dickinson. I felt a funeral in my brain and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated, a service like a drum kept beating, beating till I thought my mind was going numb. And then I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul with those same boots of lead again. Then space began to toll as all the heavens were a bell, and being but an ear, and I, and silence, some strange race wrecked solitary here. And then a plank in reason broke, and I dropped down and down, and hit a world at every plunge, and finished knowing then. Yeah, I know. Spencer, did you know that Emily Dickinson was a writer from right up the road, Amherst, Massachusetts? But she was a very private person. As she grew older, she rarely left her house, and she also began wearing only white. I did not. But did you know that only a few of her poems were published while she was alive? But when Emily died, her sister, Lavania, found and published her work. Today, there are over 1,800 Emily Dickinson poems in existence. And next up, we have Sean Colfer.
Snake Oil Snake Bite by Dilruba Ahmed. They staunched the wound with a stone. They drew blue venom from his blood until there was none. When his veins ran true, his face remained lifeless and all the mothers of the village wept and pounded their chests until the sky had little choice but to grant their supplications. God made the boy breathe again. God breathes life into us, it is said, only once. But this case was an exception. God drew back in a giant gust and blew life into the boy. And like a stranded fish, he shuddered, oceanless. It was true. The boy lived. He lived for a very long time. The toxins were an oil slick, contaminated, clean. But just as soon as the women kissed redness back into his cheeks, the boy began to die again. He continued to die for the rest of his life. The dying took place slowly, sweetly. The dying took a very long time. Sean Kofer is a great man. Huge body, standing at 6'2", the starting tight end for Agam High School. Skolf with an astounding four-point GPA. Favorite artist, the Weezers. He loves long walks on the beach and spending time with the fam. He does yard work for fun and plays the ukulele. Sean Kofer, everyone. Next up, we have Kaylee Hernandez. In the Desert by Stephen Crane. In the desert I saw a creature, naked, bestral, who, squatting upon the ground, held his heart in his hands and ate of it. I said, is it good, friend? It is bitter, bitter, he answered. But I like it, because it is bitter and because it is my heart. Ooh, we have Stephen Crane times two. Fun fact about Stephen Crane. He survived several days stranded off the coast of Florida after his ve vessel sank en route to Cuba. Oh, hooray. He must have brought his floaties. <laughs> Introducing Angie Prividenya. A Fixed Idea by Amy Lowell. What torture lurks within a single thought when grown too constant? And however kind, however welcome still, the weary mind aches with its presence. Dull remembrance taught, remembers on unceasingly, unsout, the old delight is with us, but defines that all reoccurring joy is pain refined. Become a habit and we struggle, caught. You lie upon my heart as on a nest, folded in peace for you can never know how crushed I am, having you at rest heavy upon my life. I love you so you bind my freedom from its rightful quest in mercy. Lift your drooping wings and go. Amy Lowell, what a common name. Some other Amys include Amy Acker, Amy Vera Ackerman, Amy Adams, Amy O'Clout, Amy Archer Gillen, Amy Winehouse, Amy Fisher, Amy Goodman, Amy Lee, Amy Holland, Amy Purdy, Amy Miller, and Amy Schumann. Just to name a few. Wow, that's a lot of Amys, Spencer. Introducing Dominic Chen.
Learning to Love America by Shirley Gyok Lin Lim. Because it has no pure products, because the Pacific Ocean sweeps along the coastline, because the water of the ocean is cold, and because land is better than ocean, because I say we rather than they, because I live in California, I have eaten fresh artichokes and jacaranda bloom in April and May. Because my senses have caught up with my body, my breath with the air it swallows, my hunger with my mouth. Because I walk barefoot in my house. Because I have nursed my son at my breast, because he is a strong American boy, because I have seen his eyes redden when he is asked who he is, because he answers, I don't know. Because to have a son is to have a country. Because my son will bury me here, because countries are in our blood and we bleed them. Because it is late and too late to change my mind. Because it is time. In the 1980s, Shirley Gyok Lin Lim won the Commonwealth Poetry Prize for her first collections of poems, Crossing the Peninsula. I love America. Such a great history and culture. I'm so proud to be American and a great economy, as well as the creation of McDonald's. Now introducing Hazel Meyer. No, I wasn't meant to love and be loved by Mirza Asadullah Khan Ghalib, translated by Vijay Sashadri. No, I wasn't meant to love and be loved. If I'd lived longer, I would have waited longer. Knowing you are faithless keeps me alive and hungry. Knowing you faithful would kill me with joy. Delicate are you, and your vows are delicate too. So easily do they break. You are a laconic marksman. You leave me not dead, but perpetually dying. I want my friends to heal me, succor me. Instead, I get analysis. Conflagrations that make stones drip blood are campfires compared to my anguish, two-headed, inescapable anguish loves anguish or the anguish of time. Another dark, severing, incommunicable night. Death would be fine if I only died once. I would have liked a solitary death, not this lavish funeral, this grave anyone can visit. You are mystical, Galip, and also you speak beautifully. Are you a saint or just drunk, as usual? I can feel that poem, for real, for real. I can't relate to that. Next poem is done by Ethan Danik. The Cross of Snow by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. In the long, sleepless watches of the night, a gentle face, the face of one long dead, looks at me from the wall, where, round its head, the night lamp casts a halo pale of light. Here, 
in this room, she died, and soul more white. Never through martyrdom a fire was led, nor to its repose, nor can in books be read the legend of a life more benedite. There is a mountain in the distant west that sun defying in its deep ravines displays a cross of snow upon its side. Suck is the cross I wear upon my breast. These 18 years, through all the changing scenes and season, changeless since the day she died. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow had seven siblings. You know, it's funny. My mom uses my sister as her password, and she says she doesn't have a favorite child. Well, that sounds like fun, Spencer. Next up, we have Logan Nunes. Three Hundred Goats by Naomi Shihab Nye. <clears throat> in icy fields is water flowing in the tank, or they huddle together, or bodies pressing. Is it the year of the goat or the sheep? Scholars debating Chinese zodiac, follower or leader. Oh, lead them to a warm corner, little ones toward bookier bodies. Lead them to the brush, which cuts the icy wind. Another frigid night swooping down. Aren't you worried about them? I ask my friend who lives by herself on the ranch of goats. Far from here, near the town of Ozona, she shrugs, not really. They know what to do. They're goats. Where do you find a goat with no legs? Right where you left it. That's ironic, because I am the goat. And I do, in fact, have legs. Now introducing Sam Beckwith. Les Maldives uh, by Richard Arlington. Women's tears are but water. The tears of men are blood. He sits alone in the firelight, and on either side drifts by, sleep like a torrent whirling, profound, wrinkled, and dumb. Circuitously, stealthily, dawn occupies the city as if the seasons knew of his grief. Spring has suddenly changed into snow. Disaster and sorrow have made him their pet. He cannot escape their accursed embraces, for all his dodgings, memory will lacerate him. What good does it do to wander night hours through city streets, only that in poor places he can be with common men and receive their unspoken, instinctive sympathy? What is life ever done for him? He stands alone in the darkness, like a sentry, never relieved. Looking over, a barren space awaiting the tardy finish. Thank you. Richard Arlington, great poet. I was going to read you Richard Corey by Richard Arlington, but I think you can hear enough poems, but I'll paraphrase it for you. It's about a man, tall, fine, likes golf, walking downtown. He was richer than all of us. He glittered. He had trouble saying good morning to everyone, though. And that, at the end of the day, when he went home that day, he put his pit kids to bed. Now introducing Marissa Leary.
To Helen by Edgar Allan Poe. Helen, thy beauty is to me like those Nicene barks of yore that gently o'er a perfumed sea the weary, way-worn wanderer bore to his own native shore. On desperate seas long wont to roam, thy Hessian hair, thy classic face, thy naiad airs have brought me home to the glory that was Greece and the grandeur that was Rome. Lo, in yon brilliant window niche, how statue-like I see thee stand. The agate lamp within thy hand, ah, oh, Psyche, from regions which our holy land. What did they yell at Edgar Allan Poe when he nearly walked into a tree? What? Poet tree. That's pretty good. That was pretty good. My pet horse started writing poems. I call him Edgar Allan Poe Nee. Thank you. Now introducing Abigail Pazgan. The Arrow and the Song by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I shot an arrow into the air, fell to earth, I knew not where, for so swiftly it flew the sight, could not follow it in its flight. I breathed a song into the air, fell to earth, I knew not where, for who has sight so keen and strong that can follow the flight of song? Long, long afterward in an oak, I found the arrow, still unbroke, in the song from beginning to end, I found again in the heart of a friend. Welding keys has been missing for 67 years. He disappeared on July 15, 1955. He was never found and now is presumed dead. I bet he disappeared just like my money after I paid for college. We're now introducing Abigail Drum. <laughs> Sonnet 18, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day by William Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. And every fair from fair sometime declines by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderst in his shade when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So, long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. William Shakespeare is widely known as the greatest writer in the English language. He also invented over 1,700 words. Did you know, every time Shakespeare, Shakespeare got his writing pencils confused, he would also wonder if it was to be or not to be. Now introducing Victoria Autry.
Lovely Night by Margaret Walker. My grandmothers were strong. They followed plows and burned to toil. They moved through fields, sown seed. They touched earth and grain grew. They were full of steadiness and sinking. My grandmothers were strong. My grandmothers are full of memories, smelling of soap and onions and wet clay with veins rolling roughly over quick hands. They have many clean words to say. Why am I not as they? Margaret Walker won the Langston Hughes Medal and she was inducted into the African American Literature Hall of Fame. Wow. Margaret Walker, Walker's first collection of poetry for my people, 1972, won the Yale Series of Younger Poets Award. She was the first African American woman to win this award. Now introducing Andrew Croder. The Tide Rises, The Tide Falls by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. The tide rises, the tide falls. The twilight darkens, the curlew calls. Along the sea sands, damp and brown, the traveler hastens toward the town. And the tide rises, the tide falls. Darkness settles on roofs and walls, but the sea, the sea in the darkness calls. The little waves, with their soft white hands, efface the footprints in the sands. And the tide rises, the tide falls. The morning breaks, the steeds in their stalls stamp and neigh, the holster calls. And the tide rises. The tide falls. Why do whales swim in salt water? Why? <laughs> because pepper water makes them sneeze. Thank you. Next up, we have Maddie Balzano. <laughs> Haiku and Tanka for Harriet Tubman by Sonia Sanchez. Picture a woman riding thunder on the legs of slavery. Picture her kissing our spine, saying no to the eyes of slavery. Picture her rotating the earth into the shape of lives becoming. Picture her leaning into the eyes of our birth clouds. Picture this woman saying no to the constant yes of slavery. Picture a woman jumping rivers, her legs inhaling moons. Picture her ripe with seasons of legs running. Picture her tasting the secret corners of woods. Picture her saying, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars, to change the world. Imagine her words, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Imagine her saying, I freed a thousand slaves, could have freed a thousand more, if they only knew they were slaves. Imagine her humming, how many days we got for we taste freedom. Imagine a woman asking how many workers through this freedom quilt. Picture her saying, a live runaway could do great harm by going back, but a dead runaway could tell no secrets. Picture the daylight bringing her to woods full of birth moons. Picture John Brown shaking her hands three times, saying, General Tubman, General Tubman, General Tubman. Picture her words. There's two things I got to write to. Death or liberty? Picture her saying no to a play called Uncle Tom's Cabin. I am the real thing. Picture a black woman could not read or write, 
trailing freedom of rains. Picture her face turning southward, walking down a southern road. Picture this woman, freedom bound, tasting a people's preserved breath. Picture this woman of royalty wearing a crown of morning air. Picture her walking, running, reviving a country's breath. Picture black voices leaving behind lost tongues. Did you know that Sonia Sanchez has written 16 books? Wow. That's a lot of poems. You know, I wrote a poem once. It goes, I feel, you feel, he feels, she feels, they feel, we feel. I have been told it's very touching. Now introducing Kaylee Randall. The Poison Tree by William Blake. I was angry with my friend. I told my wrath, my wrath did end. I was angry with my foe. I told it not, my wrath did grow. And I watered it in fears, night and morning with my tears. And I sunned it in smiles and with soft deceitful wiles. And it grew both day and night till it bore an apple bright. And my foe beheld it shine and he knew that it was mine. And into my garden stole, when the night had veiled the pole, in the morning, glad I see, my foe outstretched beneath the tree. What happens to a tree on Valentine's Day? They get sappy. Well, I get sad because I don't have a Valentine's Day, but Valentine's, but that's okay, because I'm strong and independent. You say no, no. Please sit tight, we'll continue in five minutes. Good morning. For those of you just joining us, this is Poetry Out Loud, the ninth annual po Poetry Out Loud, and I'm Miss Patterson welcoming you to this great contest. Um, just so you know where we are in the contest, um, 19 students have performed in round one. When they come back out, uh, we will have two more in round one. Then we will have a slight pause to tabulate the scores, and we will determine how many contestants can make it on to round two. Um, Let's okay. bring back then our MCs, Spencer Page, Kristen Vinciguerra, Maddie Pajak, and Melina Ickton. Very good. And without further ado, our contestants for round one, end of round one. Here they are. <laughs> Welcome back to Poetry Out Loud. My name is Spencer Page. My co MC, Kristen Vinciguerra. Next up, we have Eden Berry. The Last Laugh by Will Ritterland. Oh, Jesus Christ! I hate you, said, and died. Whether to vain and first, or free and deep, the bullets hurt. Vain, vain, vain! Machine guns chuckle. Tut tut, tut tut! And the big gun would fall out. Another sigh, oh mother, mother, death! Then smiled at nothing, smiled at being dead. And the lofty shrapnel cloud leisurely gestured, fool and the splinters spat and tittered. 
My love, one moaned. Love languid seemed his mood. Till slowly lowered, his whole face kissed the mud. And the bayonet's long teeth grinned. Rabbles of shells hooted and groaned. And the gas hissed. Last laugh. Sounds like when I put, when I put flour in Kristen's blow dryer, dryer, when she told me that she stole my cookies. It's okay, Spencer, because I put Nair in your shampoo. You what? <laughs> now introducing Madeline Elwell. Ocean by Nathaniel Hawthorne. The ocean has its silent caves, deep, quiet, and alone. Though there be fury on the waves, beneath them there is none. The awful spirits of the deep hold their communion there. And there are those for whom we weep, the young, the bright, the fair. Calmly the wearied seamen rest beneath their own blue sea. The ocean solitudes are blessed, for there is purity. The earth has guilt, the earth has care. Unquiet are its graves, but peaceful sleep is ever there beneath the dark blue waves. Sure. Wait. So, so say this. Yeah. So take, say this and say you wait four minutes to tell the results. And I'll say good night. How did the shark plead in the murder case? Oh. Not guilty. Ah. Ah, ha, ha, ha. No. Give us four minutes to calculate the results of round one. Good night, Aguam! Everybody, cause all you wanted to do was dance. 
That was beautiful. All right. Round one results are in. Can we get a hand for all the contestants as they make their way to the stage again? Come on out. Thank you. Your MCs will announce the round one winners. All right, our round two finalists are, can we get a drum roll please? Yeah, yeah. All right, we have Aiden Wikes. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, shit. No. We're so oh, sorry no, about no. that. The checks were not in the right spot. <laughs> Our round two finalists are Jeffrey Scholes, Alexis Wozniak, Zahida Kior, Sean Colfer. Dom Chen, Hazel Meyer, Logan Nunez, Sam Beckwith, Marissa Leary, Abigail Drum, Maddie Balzano, Eden Berry, and Madeline Elwell. All right, up next for round two today, Jeffrey Schultz will be starting. <laughs> Cartoon physics, part one. 
by Nick Flynn. Children under, say, 10 shouldn't know that the universe is ever expanding. Inexorably pushing it in the vacuum, galaxies swallowed by galaxies, whole solar systems collapsing. All of it acted out in silence. At 10, we are still learning the rules of cartoon animation, that if a man draws a door on a rock, only he can pass through it. Anyone else who tries will crash into the rock. 10-year-olds should stick with burning houses, car wrecks, ships going down, earthbound, tangible disasters, arenas where they can be heroes. You can run back into a burning house. Sinking ships have lifeboats. The trucks will come with their ladders. If you jump, you will be saved. A child places her hand on the roof of a school bus and drives across a city of sand. She knows the exact spot it will skid, at which point the bridge will give, who will swim to safety, and who will be pulled under by sharks. She will learn that if a man runs off the edge of a cliff, he will not fall until he notices his mistake. All right, and we're back for round two, but you're not Kristen. And you're not Spencer. That's right, I'm Melina. And I'm Maddie, and we'll be your MCs for round two today. Nick Flynn was born in Situate, Massachusetts. Is it on? Yeah. Tess. Yeah, it's on. All right. Nick Flynn was born in Situate, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston, and attended UMass Amherst and attended New York University to pursue a Master of Arts. Wow, a poet from in-state. I got a joke for you. What did the biologist wear to impress his date? Designer jeans. Up next, we have Alexis Wozniak. The Arrow and the Song by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I shot an arrow into the air. It fell to earth. I knew not where. For so swiftly it flew the sight. Could not follow it in its flight. I breathed a song into the air. It fell to earth. I knew not where. For who has sight so keen and strong that it can follow the flight of song. Long, long afterward in an oak, I found the arrow still unbroke and the song from beginning to end, I found again in the heart of a friend. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow was also born in Massachusetts. Well, actually Maine, but this was in 1807 when Maine wasn't a state yet. For all you guys in A-Push, you might recognize the name as he was the one who wrote Paul, Revi Paul Revere's Ride. You know, the one that goes, listen children and you shall hear the midnight ride of Paul Revere. Yeah, you get it. Up next, we have Zahida Cure. Invisible Children by Mariana Llenos. Invisible children fall to the cracks of the system like Alice in the rabbit hole. But these children won't find an eat me cake or a drink me bottle. They won't wake up on the lap of a loving sister. They'll open their eyes on the hand of a monster called negligence who poked them with its sharp teeth and bait them with its heartless laughter like a wild thing in a wild rumpus. But the children won't awake to the smell of a warm supper, nor will they find a purple crayon to draw an escape door or a window. Instead, they'll make a mirror of a murky puddle on the city street, which won't tell them they're beautiful. But it'll show their scars as invisible to others as these children are.
Mariana Llanos was born in Lima, Peru. And you know what's in Peru? Llamas. Fun fact about llamas is that they can hum. It's a way they communicate. Wow, I didn't know that. Their stomachs also have three compartments, meaning they can regurgitate their food to digest it properly. That's pretty gross. Next up, we have Sean Colfer. The Charge of the Light Brigade by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Half a league, half a league, half a league onward, all in the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the Light Brigade, charge for the guns, he said. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the Light Brigade, was there a man dismayed? Not though a soldier knew someone had blundered. There's not to make reply. There's not to reason why. There's but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Cannon to the right of them, cannon to the left of them, cannon in front of them volleyed and thundered, stormed at by shot and shell. Boldly they rode and well into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell, rode the 600. Flashed all their sabers bare, flashed as they turned in air, sabering the gunners there, charging an army while all the world wondered. Plunged in the battery smoke, right through the line they broke, Cossack and Russian reeled from the saber stroke, shattered and sundered. Then they rode back, but not, not 600. Cannon to the right of them, cannon to the left of them, cannon behind them, volleyed and thundered, stormed by shot and shell, Horse and hero fell, those that had fought so well came through the jaws of death, back from the mouth of hell. All that was left of them, left of 600. When can their honor fade? Oh, the wild charge they made. All the world wondered. Honor the charge they made. Honor the Light Brigade, noble 600. Just want to remind everyone to be respectful to the MCs and poets. We do work hard on these. So, Sean Kofa. He's one of those people you want at your campfire. Useful, indeed. Skolf one time, me and him, won a road trip with our good friend Matt Bernard. We were on our way to California when our car broke down. I fainted with a worry. Matt fled to the nearby woods. But Skolf... He did not stray. He fixed the car like it was nothing. We never found Matt, but we made it to Cali after all. Now introducing Dominic Chen. Nothing to Do by James Ephraim McGirt. The fields are white, the labors are few. Yet say the idle, there's nothing to do. Jails are crowded and Sunday schools few. 
We still complain there's nothing to do. Drunkards are dying. Their blood falls on. Drunkards are dying. Your sons, it is true. Mother's arms folded with nothing to do. Heathens are dying. Their blood falls on you. How can you people find nothing to do? Before he became a businessman, McGirt had created his own magazine that ran for six years called McGirt's Magazine. Wow. I wonder how he came up with that name. It's really original. It really is, Melina. <laughs> up next, we have Hazel Meyer. There are birds here by Jamal May for Detroit. There are birds here, so many birds here, is what I was trying to say when they said those birds were metaphors for what is trapped between buildings and buildings. No, the birds are here to root around for bread. The girls' hands tear and toss like confetti. No, I don't mean the bread is torn like cotton. I said confetti. And no, not the confetti a tank can make of a building. I mean the confetti a boy can't stop smiling about and no his smile isn't much like a skeleton at all and no his neighborhood is not like a war zone i'm trying to say his neighborhood is as tattered and feathered as anything else a shadow pierced by sun and light parted by shadow dance as anything else but they won't stop saying how lovely the ruins how ruined the lovely children must be in that birdless city. That title sounds really ominous. I don't know if I like that sense of impending doom. Yeah, it sounds like those birds are just waiting for the right moment to get revenge. That's really specific. What did you do to those birds, Maddie? Up next, we have Logan Nunez. Golf. All right. <clears throat> the Affliction of Richard by Robert Bridges. I'm going to sing it again, too. <laughs> Love not too much, but how when thou because I must. And dost thy gifts bestow, how can I love too much, though I fear to lose. And drown my joy in care, with all its thorns I choose, the path of love and prayer. Though thou I know not why. Oof. Um. Though thou I know not why. Oh, didst kill my childish trust. Um, with breach, with toil, did I repair because I must. In spite of fright and schemes, with which the fiends of hell blaspheme, blaspheme thee in my dreams, so far I have hoped well. Um, yeesh. Crap. Um, so far I have hoped well. Line? Oh, um, what the heavenly key 
um, what Marvel in me wrought. Um, oof. Marvel in me wrought. Oh, um, shall quiet exculpate thee? I have no shadow of thought. What am I that complain? What am I that complain? Um, um, the love from which began my question sad and vain justifies thee to man. Before Robert Bridges was a poet, he had been a doctor after studying at St. Bartholomew's Hospital in London. Ironically, he was diagnosed with a lung disease that forced him to retire. In his retirement, he began to work on poetry and writing full time. Up next, we have Sam Beckwith. Okay. Oh, not again. April Midnight by Arthur Simons. Side by side in the streets at midnight, are roaming together. Through, through the a tumultuous night of London and the miraculous April weather. Roaming together uh, under the gaslight. How the spring calls to us here in the city. A, a, a call to the heart, uh, from the heart of a lover. A good it is uh, to be here together. A good to be roaming. Even in London, even at midnight. A lover like in a lover's gloaming. Are you the dancer? And I, uh, the dreamer, a, a, a wandering lost in, in the night of London, in the miraculous April weather. Thank you. Speaking of April, me and the president were both born on the same day in April. Wait, which president? Lin Jang, of course. Up next, we have Marissa Leary. Much madness is divinest sense by Emily Dickinson. Much madness is divinest sense. To a discerning eye, much sense, the starkest madness. Tis the majority in this, as all prevail. Ascend, and you are sane. Demure, you're straightway dangerous, and handled with a chain. Emily Dickinson had a pretty green thumb. She loved gardening. That's pretty cool. All the plants I have are really struggling these days. You know, I think the root cause of all your pro planting problems is you, Maddie. Come on, Molina. <laughs> Up next, we have Abigail Drum. I am the people, the mob by Carl Sandburg. I am the people, the mob, the crowd, the mass. Do you know that all the great work of the world is done through me? I am the working man the inventor, the maker of the world's food and clothes. I am the audience, 
that witnesses history. The Napoleons come from me and the Lincolns. They die, and then I send forth more Napoleons and Lincolns. I am the seed ground. I am a prairie that will stand for much plowing. Terrible storms pass over me. I forget. The best of me is sucked out and wasted. I forget. Everything but death comes to me and makes me work and give up what I have. And I forget. Sometimes I growl, shake myself, and spatter a few red drops for history to remember. Then I forget. When I, the people, learn to remember, when I, the people, use the lessons of yesterday and no longer forget who robbed me last year, who played me for a fool, then there will be no speaker in all the world say the name, the people with any fleck of a sneer in his voice or any far off smile of derision. The mob, the crowd, the mass will arrive then. Wow, that poem had a great message. Yeah, it does. Carl Sandburg won three Pulitzer Prizes in his career. Wait, I remember hearing about this. Weren't two for his poetry and one for his biography of Abraham Lincoln? Yeah, you're right, Melina. Next up, we have Maddie Balzano. The Wish by a Young Lady by Letitia Pilkington. I ask not wit, nor beauty do I crave, nor wealth, nor pompous titles wish to have, but since tis doomed through all degrees of life, whether daughter, sister, or a wife, that females should the stronger males obey and yield implicit to their lordly sway. Since this, I say, is every woman's fate, give me a mind to suit my slavish state. Laisha Pilkington was born in Ireland. Recipe for potato cakes. Ingredients, one pound of potatoes, two teaspoons of salt, one ounce butter, three to four ounce flour. Boil the potatoes, then drain and sieve them. Add salt and butter and work in as much flour as the potatoes will easily absorb. Turn onto a floured board and knead lightly. Roll out one fourth, thick, one fourth inch thick and cut into rounds or triangles. Cook on a hot griddle or in a thick frying pan until golden brown on both sides for about eight to 10 minutes. Spread with butter and serve hot. Next up, we have Eden Berry. The Second Coming by William Butler Yeats. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed, and everywhere, the ceremony of innocence is lost. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are filled with passionate intensity. 
Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming, hardly are those words out, when a vast image of Spiritus Mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs, while all about it, real shadows of the indignant desert birds. Twenty centuries of stony sleep have shown me, vexed to And what rough beast, it's our come at last, slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. William Butler Yeats was also born in Ireland, similar to Laisha Pilkington. I was going to recite a mashed potatoes recipe, but I'll save myself and you guys the embarrassment. And finally, for our last contestant of the day, we have Madeline Elwell. The Tide Rises, The Tide Falls by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. The tide rises, the tide falls, the twilight darkens, the curlew calls. Along the sea sands, damp and brown, a traveler hastens toward the town. And the tide rises, the tide falls. Darkness settles on the roofs and walls, but the sea, the sea in the darkness calls. The little waves with their soft white hands efface the footprints in the sands. And the tide rises, the tide falls. Morning breaks, the steeds in their stalls stamp and neigh as the holster calls. The day returns, but nevermore returns the traveler to the shore. And the tide rises, the tide falls. All right, everyone, that was our final poem. Any last jokes from you, Melina? I got one more up my sleeve. What did the beaver find after his home was destroyed by a flood? Not a damn thing. Oh, that's a good one. And with that, this concludes this year's Poetry Out Loud. It's been a pleasure having fun and cracking jokes with you all. Um, just to inform you, sit tight, stay in your seats. We're going to announce the winner in two minutes and the two runner-ups. Logan will be here. Let's have uh, one last round for our finalists. Stand up, everybody. Stand up. All right. For pictures, for pictures.
Stand up for pictures. Thank you. All right, without further ado, our runner up for the 2023 Poetry Out Loud, Zahida Cure. And the 2023 Agawam High School Poetry Out Loud winner, heading to the districts in March, Abigail Drum. Thank you, we'll be around for pictures, everybody. Close my eyes, it all just sounds like ooh. 